Hello, my name is Stefan Reinhold. Um, I'm working at the Karim Institute in the Department of Pharmacology and Toxicology at the University in Maastricht. And today I will approach a very difficult topic and it's about the interplay between PPA gamma and wind signaling in vascular calcification. <coughs> so we will start very easy. So just imagine you're sitting in a traffic jam at a Monday at 5 p.m., so a lot of cars here, and you're in Cologne, so it's even worse. So in front of you is a very big construction site, and if you look to the right, there's a guy in a car. The name of the guy is Paul, and Paul actually is a panda bear. So Paul made some bad choices. He's a bit lazy, doesn't like to exercise, doesn't like to move around a lot, so he's a bit obese. And also he's smoking since he's very, very young. So besides that, he also has quite a temper. So he had a bad day at work, and uh, meaning that he's currently a bit on the edge and has a high blood pressure. And suddenly, um, Paul feels a bit weird. So he has a sharp pain in the chest. Um, he feels a bit dizzy and he starts to sweat like this very bad cold sweating you. And um, yeah, suddenly he just needs to get air. So he jumps out of the car, tries to get some air, and then he suddenly collapses on the floor. Poor Paul. So what actually happened here is something very similar to a traffic jam, um, but it's just in your arteries. So if you look at the artery, at the healthy artery, it is very important to supply your tissues like your heart, your brain. And in atherosclerosis, which is a cardiovascular disease, you have an occlusion of this um, artery. And this occlusion is made of dead cells, proteins, fat, and it leads to a lack of supply of oxygen to the tissue. And when we look at Paul's cardiovascular system, <clears throat> we can see that there are very different outcomes for that. For example, if you have atherosclerosis in your carotid arteries which supply your brain, you will get a stroke. If you have it in your heart, you have obviously a heart attack, like Paul already did now. Um, and you can also have it in your legs, for example, which is called peripheral artery disease, and which can lead to an amputation of a leg. <clears throat> so very bad outcomes, you don't want that, obviously. And this disease, these cardiovascular diseases, um, currently affect around 18 million people uh, worldwide which die because of that. And 80% of these people die because of a heart attack or a stroke. So it is very, very important to tackle this problem. Besides that, <coughs> there's something we call calcification and atherosclerosis. We all know calcification normally as a good thing. So the biological calcification, which forms our bones, which uh, uh, yeah, enable me to, to walk around, to show you something. Um, <coughs> but there's also something we call vascular or pathological calcification, which can, um, for example, happen in your soft tissue, in your fingers. It can ha happen in your vasculature. And when that happens, it's always bad. It's a natural process, but it happens on a place it shouldn't be. And why exactly is that so important for us? So what, what are the studies telling us about this? So um, what we actually can learn from that, from that very complicated diagram you can see here, um, I will break it down to one sentence. Actually, we have a three to four fold higher increase of um, strokes or heart attacks, in general also events, um, when we have a vascular calcification in our arteries. So we really, really want to get rid of that. Um, let's imagine an empty street. So at the street you see a crossing, and at this crossing you will see a cell. And the cell actually is a vascular smooth muscle cell which is a very important cell in your arteries because it is, uh, enables the artery to contract and to relax so it regulates your blood pressure. Um, this cell actually can go different ways to different streets. For example, it can go to the left way, to the so-called Piper Gamma Street, which is normally very important for, um, to form adipose tissue. Um, it can go to the right, to the wind street, which is important for the bone development and calcification. But it also can go many, many other ways. So there are many, many ways uh, that are also possible, 
but we will now concentrate on the PPI Gamma Street and the Wind Street. So, back to the traffic jam. So, you remember the construction site, right? In front of you, and you were very mad because of that. Actually, it looks like this. Uh, so, it's very bad. And um, you can see no, no car can drive there, right? And that's actually what happens in atherosclerosis. It kind of blocks the PPI Gamma Street and is the construction site of the, in front of the street. So, you can pass, the cell can pass there. So, it has to take the um, wind street, so it goes more in the direction of bone tissue and also to vascular calcification, which we already heard is a very big problem and leads to more heart attacks and strokes. So <coughs> let's imagine this as some kind of a scale. You have the wind signaling on the left side and the PPI gamma signaling on the right side. So in normal vasculature, it's balanced. So we have no problems here. And actually, wind signaling is very important for your bones, so it's actually also a good pathway. If you have atherosclerosis, it changes. So the um, wind signaling is very active and it's, let's say, heavier than the PPI gamma signaling. And this leads to calcification and atherosclerosis. If we treat the cell with trucks that can be like a navigation system for the cell to go around the construction site, to go more the PPI gamma pathway, we are possible able to reduce the vascular calcification. And this is actually what my research project is about. I will try to, uh, I will isolate um, vascular smooth muscle cells from the healthy abdominal aorta of um, patients. Um, we will induce the calcification, so we will send them straight away to the calcification street, to the wind street. And then we will treat them with PPI gamma specific drugs. We give them the navigation system to go the right pathway, the PPI gamma street. And with that, we hope we send them on the right pathway. We will uh, analyze the genetic traits of the cells. So um, if genes are up or lower regulated. And then what we actually could found already um, that bone-related genes like WIN5A or SOX9, you don't ha have to remember that names, but just that bone-related re uh, related genes are down-regulated when we stimulate with PPI gamma-specific drugs, which means that this can give us new insights and in vascular calcifications and also the access to possible new treatments. Luckily, Paul is still alive, and therefore I want to thank you very much for your attention. And yeah.